Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Quasimorph, shall we, and do a complete beginner's guide to getting into this game. This tutorial is for version 6.1, is the latest version that has come out, so some elements may be subject to change, but what we're going to do is start up a brand new game and explain the basics of how to play Quasimorph, how to understand the UI, the controls, the game systems, and also some tips and tricks so that you can survive. We're not going to spoil anything. We're not going to, you know, tell you how to fast and power level or anything like that. We're going to instead just learn the very, very fundamentals of the game so that you can enjoy Quasimorph at your own pace. So I'm going to start a brand new game for us right now. The history of humanity is written in tears and blood. Liars, tyrants, idealists, they all tried to bring happiness on the edge of a sword. We waited for liberation from the shackles of fate and were ready to go through the last judgment for it. Not for the glorious death for the eternal kingdom, love, or the Lord, but for a way to step off the path of suffering. But when the apocalypse came, we shrugged our shoulders and started profiting from it as usual. The creatures lurking in the depths of space didn't seem scarier than our own world. Armed with the hope that the darkest hour comes before dawn, we try to survive until the first rays of the sun. All right, so there's a little bit of a story blurb at the beginning, but you can imagine that this will become more fleshed out as the game goes on. Really, all we need to know is that things have, you know, we're in the future, things have potentially gone badly, and we're a mercenary group just kind of trying to survive, make money, and that's that's what we're doing. So Jane here uh, works, she calls us boss, but she seems like the boss in my experience. Good morning, boss. Let's first restore memory after the diapause. During the ANCOM mission on Venus, we awakened a quasimorph named uh, Tez Clatan. Now, I just call this um, quasimorph Tez because I can't pronounce that word properly. Uh, now his quasimorphs are still in our world, which is weird. There's no information in the news that we're involved. Meanwhile, corporates insist that quasimorphosis is a fabrication and claim that Tez is a provocation by civil resistance. We are now orbiting Phobos and have time to recover and figure out what to do next. The supplies on the ship are running low, so we need to find ourselves some new profitable what do you want to continue training yes i do attention attention we're getting interrupted vector four sector six northern hemisphere five launches detected rocket engines approaching rapidly activating countermeasures magnum grab onto something it's going to be loud so the magnum is our ship now quasimorphs and quasimorphosis are an element of the game that is best described as there if we're not inside the system of Mars and you are out exploring the longer you spend in the zone the higher the quasimorphosis rate is what I'm calling it increases which increases the probability that an enemy that you kill will get reanimated as like an interdimensional Aztec-like being, uh, which has to be seen to be believed. But it's kind of like Alien, you know, like they, they, they come out and then they spawn. So it's another danger that is very real. And they've just recently changed how they kind of pop into our dimension or reality. But long story short, you have another thing that you have to fight uh, that can be much harder than what you previously killed, so we got to look out for it. 
Here's the Magnum. Here's our ship. Let's go. It seems to be civil resistance. We need to clear them out from Magnum. Our future depends on it. So generally in this story, you know, words that are in white are important. They're like names of factions or whatever. There's actually a ton more story that happens within the game. Um, and there's politics between the different factions and things. So it has a pretty interesting lore at the micro level when you are playing the game that feels like a really cool science fiction novel. And yet, at the macro level, um, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I think more time needs to cook on the, the narrative. All right. Bridge. Let's remember how to move. To navigate, use left mouse button on the required square or up, down, left, right on the keyboard. In the bottom left corner of the screen, you'll find your energy reserve, pain threshold counter, health and movement mode. The movement mode determines how many action points you have until opponents take their turn. Make sure no one is behind you. Press right mouse button to look around. In the closet behind you, you'll find standard equipment. Use it. Okay. So there's a lot that she just says right there that doesn't it's not entirely clear and it wasn't clear to me for quite some time as I was playing this game but let me explain it by the way I do have uh, I streamed this game a few times I have some let's play videos if you want to see my first time and you want to see some further gameplay content I'll link those down below so this game uh, is from the same publisher as Stone Shard if you've played Stone Shard some of the control elements will seem familiar as well as the injury system, for example. But what is uh, Quasimorph? Well, this game is a turn-based roguelike. And I guess I should say roguelite, because when you die, you have a persistent base on the Magnum that allows you to keep playing, and you lose the cloned copy of that character, but you can you know, like bring back another clone of that character you will lose all of your experience at this stage when you die, but you can get it back usually pretty easily, and you will you lose a good bit of your items, but some of them will retain. So you don't, it's not a true roguelike where you lose everything when you die, but there is a pretty severe penalty for dying that you want to try to avoid. Okay, so let me use right mouse button, and if I just click around with right mouse button, my character will rotate. It just does not take any time to do. So you want to do this to make sure there's no fog of war and you can see everything around you. Now, when you mouse over something that you can interact with, the mouse will change so that you can tell what is something that's interactable in the environment. So, for example, this locker, uh, when I mouse over it, you see how it gets the, changes the mouse into a magnifying glass and then over in the middle center left of the screen, it says container left click for action. Now, in the bottom left, it gives me our health monitor. D2000, this confused me with the green bar. This is actually our satiety. So you need 2000 calories or whatever per day. And you know you start at this and it goes down as you progress. So you need to eat to survive in this. You do not need to drink, but you can drink water to restore your health. We'll look at that in a moment. Then um, below this, you have your health monitor and you know, when it's happily in green and everything like this, this looks like you're in good health. And this is how many hit points we have. This is our pain threshold, which we're not hurt. So no effect. Generally, the more hurt you are, the more pain you have, it will uh, negatively impact your character, like with your aim and stuff like that. And you can mouse over this to see the result. Uh, but this is one of the most important things about this game. And we're going to explain it in combat because it becomes easier to understand in that context but basically right now i'm in normal movement mode this is something that's unique to this game i've never seen this um at least that i can remember off the top of my head in another turn-based roguelike but it's not like most turn-based roguelikes where it's action action like i move and then the enemy moves and then it's like my turn and then i do my thing and then the enemy gets to attack in this you have action points and movement, okay, takes 
action points, but not all of them. And so right here, for example, I'm in normal walking mode, but I can push Z um, or I can, I'm sorry, I can click on Z. It, it is Z and X, but for some reason it's not responding to my move faster or slower. So some things, you know, might not be working fully in early access. The game is in early access, by the way, but also I'm in the tutorial. So some commands might be gated until I get through it. But the point that I want to make is in normal movement mode right here, I get two actions, which means I could just attack twice. And these green bars underneath my character icon here tell me how many actions I have. So if I'm in stealth mode, okay, um, you can mouse over your walking type to get a description. Every action, um, I only get one action point per turn. My actions take less calories to do, um, but I can use my inventory where I can interact for zero cost, which means like I can throw something, um, I can per perhaps use an item from my inventory or I can interact with the environment uh, for zero cost. Or I can go up to normal, which makes it consumes more calories, um, but I get two action points per turn, or I can go to three, which means I'm running. Now, this consumes the most calories, and you can't use your inventory when you're running, and you can't interact when you're running, but you do get three actions per turn. Now, it might seem like, oh, I'll just shoot the enemy. You get a minus 25% accuracy penalty when you're in running mode. So what this is, of course, for is running away from enemies, so you can move three times, you know, before they can act, which can help you survive. Now, most of the time, I play the game in normal mode. But we'll look at that again. It tr it will throw you because you'll, at least for me, it throws me like I'll attack. And I'm like, well, wait, why aren't they attacking? Oh, it's because I actually have an ac another action point. So always look at these little green bars below your character to know if you have more action points. Now, I'm going to walk up here to the container. Now, you can use the arrow keys to move okay so you use like up now look i moved down okay you'll notice that um this turned on my pain threshold pulse thing but it's fine it just is moving now and then i've taken one step which has used one ap to move that tile and then if i move up by walking up it's a new round again i got my action points back you can move using the arrows, and then you can move diagonally using the num key, the numpad, but for some reason you can't use the numpad to move up, down, left, and right. So I use the mouse to move pretty much exclusively in this game, just like I'm playing a stone chart. So I can click up here, for example, and then walk over here. But notice how when I did that... Okay, well, watch this. One, two... If I'm, even though it's one click of the mouse button, for every tile, it's an action point when I'm moving this way. So be aware of how, like right now, um, if I were to, to attack, it would be a mistake because um, I, we only have one action point left. But instead, if I step, now I have two and I can fire twice. So we'll look at the timing. Anyway, I'm going to open this up. Uh, and we'll look at the timing in combat. It'll make more sense. In the storage, okay, when I click on this, you can see my inventory on the left and the storage on the right. Now, you can just push G to take everything, which I'm going to do. Leave the cabin and head to the elevator. It's in the room across. We need to eliminate all these bastards. Okay, but first, let's do some things. So now in the upper left, my inventory appears. I have a gun. I've equipped it. It is, if I mouse over it, a tactical pistol. I have some ammo right here. This number tells me how many bullets I have uh, currently um, in the magazine, 14. So I'm doing well bullet-wise, but if I push I to open up the inventory, I can see this screen again and check out my paper doll. So here are some things to notice. This is my backpack, and the tourist is a tactical backpack, and you see it says... Um, condition 100 out of 100. I'm just reading the tooltip from the top to the bottom, and you get this by mousing over it. Everything degradates, so you need to be aware of this. If it gets to zero, it will break. You can't use it. You want to keep it repaired, topped off. Size, 6 by 2 
This is my inventory size, so your backpack determines how much you can carry. So that's why I have six green squares over here. If I get a bigger backpack that's six by three, I'll get a whole nother row of inventory. We want that as soon as possible. Now down here, underneath, I also have a mag vest. Now this thing gives you like utility inventory item slots for grenades, um, ammunition, so that you can reload faster and it also, you know, de facto inventory overflow. And you can see this in the bottom center of the screen here. I have slot one and slot two. So I'm going to take these bullets and I'm actually going to put them in my mag vest. It gives me another inventory space. Um, but some mag vests, uh, it will help you reload faster if it's on your mag vest instead of in your bag. Now you could put grenades here as well, for example. We don't have any. But what we do have are we got t-shirt, jeans, antibiotic, bandage, and splint. Now, these things will become important when we get injured or if we want to fight infection. And you can mouse over all of these medical items to see what they do if you're interested. And we'll talk about them when they come up. Now, I equipped this Hyber shirt and Hyber pants because I just came out of the pod. But you see that um, this t-shirt is better than what I have. And I can tell that because... It says some stat, the jeans, for example. It has in the tooltip condition. And then you see how it says resist cold. It's green with an upper arrow. That means that it's giving me an improvement of two resist cold. And then it has an item weight. And your overall carry weight does affect your um, satiety drain. So if you mouse over this in the inventory in the bottom left, it says equipment weight. And it tells you that because of I have this much weight, I'm losing some chance to dodge. So if you want to be a dodging character, you want to travel light. And then the heavier your load, the more your satiety drain, which means your food bar will drain faster and you will need to eat more often. So pay attention to these to know what's going on with your weight impact on your character. Now down here in the bottom right, these are my resistances. Uh, as of now, I have four cold resist. I have two poison resist. But let's just say I want to equip this t-shirt. Um, I can right-click on it, and I can just then open up the contextual menu, and I just say equip it. And now my cold resist goes up to six. Okay, so now I've got jeans and t-shirt. My cold resistance has gone up, and I'm equipped with this tactical hydra pistol. Now let me explain the weapon a bit. So it has condition. It tells you a damage range, 14 to 26 tells you how much it does on a crit it tells you its range now this is kind of like its optimal range you can shoot longer than this but usually if you shoot beyond the range um you will have a reduction in accuracy uh but let me see if that still is holding true with this version of the game if or if i'm not remembering that correctly ammo per shot it says one or two and we'll talk about you can change your fire mode to fire more shots per round but it uses more ammo Reload duration, it takes two action points to reload this gun, so a full turn for us. Has 90% accuracy, it has a scatter of 2.6 degrees, it weighs 3 kilograms, and it, ha it can hold 14 ammo. Now, interestingly though, you see at the bottom the ammo type, the different 9mm shells that it can have here. If I mouse over the ammo, it actually tells you what damage type you're going to do when you use the weapon. So you change damage type by changing ammo most of the time. So this is doing blunt damage, these 9mm bullets, and they boost your crit chance. They have a little bit of knockback chance. So sometimes your ammo will affect your damage type, how much damage you do, your accuracy. So you need to look at both the gun stats and the ammo stats to kind of figure out what you're doing with your weapon. Now, I don't have anything in my helmet slot, and I don't have anything in my secondary weapon slot at the moment. I just have this pistol. Now, I could go over here to this container, but there's nothing on it. You see how this bookshelf is empty, or you see how this locker is open? If you see in the environment, and you'll learn the visual cue for this, there will be graphic, like graphically you will see items on the shelf if there's something to pick up here. But it's empty, so it looks empty. If there's something in the locker, it will be closed to indicate there's something in the locker. But once you've picked it clean, it looks open and empty like this. So you could just visually tell if there's something in there or not. And there's nothing in there. I'm going to walk over to the door. And when you mouse over the door, the icon changes and it says you can open it with left click or right click to have additional actions if you want. 
Um, but I don't have any right now. I'm just going to left click to open it. If you press key T, you can get information about the mission status or request evacuation. Evacuation is done via elevator or shuttle, but right now we have nowhere to retreat. So I'm going to just click right mouse to look up here. So you can see right here, this is what she's talking about. In the upper right, this is opened up. Mission management, I have talk to Jane, and then I have look at the mini-map. So I can talk to her, and she says, this is what we need to do to win. Clear all floors of Magnum invaders. They're invading our ship. Med block, the, and um, she's telling us, med block, armory, engine room. These are the floors that we need to clear. And when it says the data is being refined, this means she doesn't have enough information to tell me how many targets are left on the floor. But as we move through, she will update this to give us a, a better idea of how many enemies remain. You can always just push T and talk to her to get an update on your mission status. It's very useful. And you can push M to look at the minimap. Now, uh, you can push M or you can click on this to do that. You can move this around, okay? Um, and you can even mouse over stuff to see what it is. And you see how it says searched in parentheses on this container? It just tells you, hey, did you look through that? Yes, I did. And this will become filled out as I explore the map. Now, another cool thing is you can mouse around um, and you can move to the edge of the screen using uh, the mouse and it will just kind of move the entire map around. And when we've explored more, this is really useful because you can just click anywhere and have your person go there if you want to get around fast. And there's no enemies, it doesn't matter. Um, now I'm going to open this door and look around and here's an elevator. Uh, to go to another floor to move between station levels use elevators or stairs in the elevator control window all floors connected by the elevator shaft are displayed press the floor you need i strongly recommend starting with the med bay if we lose the bio printer there will be serious difficulties in cloning you or other fighters so we need to keep that bio printer online so that we don't when we die we don't die completely now i'm going to go up here and explore a little bit there's not much. I'm just going to look around. But there is this container here that is empty. It's a vending machine. And these doors um, are locked, but we can attack them to open them. But we don't need to do that right now. Um, we are currently on the bridge. And sh there's no enemies on the bridge. So we don't need to go up there and fight anything. What we want to do is go down to the next level here. When you click on the elevator, it will tell you where you can go. And it'll say bridge, med block, this is what we're clicking, which is floor two, which is what she recommended. And we can see all the different floors. This is the med bay where the bio printer is located. A perfect place to remind you about your health. If your health reaches zero, you will die. If your pain threshold reaches its limit, you will skip a turn. So that's another bad thing about pain. If it goes too high, you will start skipping turns. Damage you receive can lead to injuries or limb loss. Keep an eye on that. Yeah, it's important. Take a close look at the health interface by pressing the H key. So this is actually very important. I'm just going to right mouse button to look around first. Then we can push H to go to the health monitor. I'm sending a signal to the, your computer about a new wound. You need to fix it. To do this, press left mouse button on your medical kit to your right. Then select the injured body part. Okay, so... Somehow we just magically got hurt for the purposes of the tutorial. Now this health screen shows us a, a readout of our body and you could see here's how many hit points we have here's our pain threshold here's our metabolism and our satiety level here's our effects going on here's our poisoning here's our infection and here's our o2 as far as i know o2 is not relevant um unless you know you're asphyxiating but that just doesn't really happen um it's pretty much always at 22 percent this might have some effects later in the development cycle, but right now not. Infection and poisoning are extremely important. Um, I've died from uh, both. Not good. So, at least I think I've died from infection. I've definitely died um, from poisoning. But what you want to do right now, we're not poisoned, we're not infected, is look at the area that's injured, which is right now our knee. So it says it's fractured, and we can't run because it's been fractured. And our dodge is reduced by 20%, and our health per move is minus 2, meaning like every step, it hurts us because we're injured, and we take minus 2 health when we move. If I look at my stomach, it has no problems. Now, what do I want to do? Well, I need to fix this. It's fractured. A splint 
says it stabilizes the wound and it heals fractures plus 20 percent the bandage you can use um but it doesn't it's not specific for fractures so you want to use the best item for the injury type you have so i'm going to click on the splint and i'm just going to it turns into a syringe when you click on a medical item and then you click on the area on your health that is red the box here the knee joint and it's been treated so at the top center of the screen you're going to see your buffs and debuffs um and you can't mouse over them when the health screen is open so i'm just going to close it so we can look at this it seems you've acquired an infection open your inventory by pressing i and use a sorbent or antibiotic if the wound is not fixed the infection develops faster now this is incredibly important information you see we are infected and we also have a fracture now this says in 10 turns um we we have regeneration of two so this will kind of negate the pain that we have right now from our fracture or the injury that we're taking but i'm going to press i and all we have is the antibiotic so it says general action drug it heals infection up 80 percent infection can be cured by this which is amazing it also cures 40 percent of poisoning so if i right click and i use this you'll see my um, infection goes away in extreme cases you can perform an amputation oh my god to do this select amputate in the context menu of a sharp object and choose the body part note that you can't bandage yourself when in sprint mode so right if you're sprinting you can't use restorative items you can't use your inventory so you gotta change your movement mode so now we are at full health because of this regeneration and um, if I go to the health screen, you see how this has been stabilized. So it has a chance of recovery in 70%, and it says remains 9. Now, what this means is in 9 turns, I'm going to make a die roll, basically, is the way I understand it. And I have a 70% chance to have my knee joint wound get fixed. And then it goes back to green, and there's no problems. So it's a pretty good result. I don't need to use a bandage on this because it's green. It's been stabilized. We're good. Okay. So now... Um, it's time to explore. Now, this container, we know it's empty because it looks empty. So there's no reason to search it. We could search this right here, and we do find some poppy straws, which are um, crafting items. We could take these and go to our inventory. You see they stack, and these can be used to craft healing items at workbenches in the field or on our ship um, when we're not in the tutorial. All right, so here we are in the med bay and we want to go over here i'm going to move to the edge of the door now you can see we're healing up time is passing our health is fine and i'm going to go right in front of the door i'm going to just face it and i'm going to open the door a new turn starts i'm going to kind of walk in and walk like this now i will tell you if you decide to like walk far and you see an enemy, the game should stop you immediately. Okay. And oh boy, look at these suspended people in these tubes. Now, unfortunately, if we go to health, um, our fracture was not healed by our splint. Remember, we only had a 70% chance to heal it. So it comes back. And we're losing health per turn. So we can go ahead and just use the bandage on this. And this only has a 50% chance to stabilize the injury. But it does have a chance. So let's try that. Better than nothing. And we are... The regeneration from the bandage um, counteracts the loss of damage from... Or loss of health from the knee fracture. Now I'm going to interact with the toilet. So in the toilet, you're going to find... Some it depends... Sometimes you're lucky and you find feces. Feces are feces. They have no use um, other than to be disgusting. But even grosser is I'm going to take this um, water bottle. So we're going to just take it. So why am I taking water from a toilet? Well, um, we're doing that because water, albeit disgusting from a toilet you could see that it does a few things for us it heals us 10 health by just drinking the water so it has a slight restorative effect and it extinguishes fire which can be very important you could pour it on the ground 
to put out fire on the tile around you, or you could put it on yourself to get rid of you if you're on fire. Okay, so I opened the door, and we got shot. Now, that guy missed. A couple of things happened. Number one, the game stopped us from moving again. I probably could have actually... Um, I was talking about the water. I could have actually maybe paid, paid more attention. But anyway, um, now we have an enemy on the screen, and it's right here. So he shot us, and he has missed. Now, I have two actions before he gets to act. His missed shot, look at the upper center of the screen. It has triggered my combat focus, which is a perk trigger. And it gives me 40% extra dodge class. Now, if I push C, as you see in the upper right, to open my class window... We get some information about our character. I am Francis Reed Daly, and I am a, uh, of the Scouts of Hades. This is my class, this Scout class. And because of this, I get the access to these skills around this wheel. Gunsmith, Blind Fury, Bodybuilding, Combat Focus, Hardening, Training, and CQC Specialist. So, for example, the skill that we just triggered, Combat Focus, what does this do? It gives you a chance to dodge. So attacking a player, whether hit or not, activates this ability. So even if I if I get hit or I don't get hit, I get combat focus as a scout. Now, what's important about these skills that you want to read about is at the bottom of the tooltip, it tells you how to level this up. So you see how at the top of the tooltip, it says it's level one, and I have 10 experience out of 50 required to level up. Now, when I level this up, it will become better, like perhaps providing more dodge chance when it triggers, for example, other effects. So right here it says each trigger activation of combat focus gives 10 experience. Now, it does have a cost. It costs 50 hunger when it triggers. So my hunger bar, which is 1722, went down by 50 because of that. And it, can, it has a 40 turn cooldown. So this takes 40 turns to trigger again. However, as you can see at the top center, it lasts for five turns. So it's so good. It's like five turns I get this huge dodge bonus, which is very, very uh, important. Now, remember, my weight is reducing my dodge chance a bit. Um, so if I want um, all of the information about myself, I can push C again to open this up. And I can look at my ranged combat, my close combat, and my dodge. So my dodge chance currently is 30%. So this is with everything taken into effect. I do believe. I believe this number is correct. And that will be taking into account, if I go to health, um, I get dodge reduced by 20% and then dodge reduced by 5% um, from my weight. But then I'm getting a boost of 40%. And then I just probably have um, a dodge bonus based on my character stats so this will go up and down i do believe that this dynamically reflects what your current chance is anyway this is where you can come to get lots of information so here's our ranged combat we have a 60 percent accuracy we have eight vision distance which is how many tiles away we can see and here's our damage bonus so all of your skills um some of them have exceptions like uh this talent okay this is just always here. It does not level up. It has no experience, but it gives you 100% weapon durability, which is good. It means your weapons last longer. This hardening, anytime you get hit, it triggers, um, and you have a 5% less... Well, anytime you get hit, this is, comes into a play, which means you have a 5% less chance of getting wounded. So um, this just helps you not have more aggressive status effects based on wounds and every time you get hit and take damage you get 10 experience here so look at all of your skills and see what triggers them and so you can understand how to level them up now these are what is lost when your character dies so for example like let's say i got i believe it's either four or five that's the max skill level for a skill let's say i got it up to four I couldn't get any more experience. It's maxed out. But if I died, I'd have to start over again at level one. Anytime I pick Scout as a class. And what's cool about this game is you can change your class um, when you unlock more of them and use them with different, the same clone. You know, like you could have this guy be a Scout, but then he dies and he gets reborn. And you could choose a different class for them. And you could even change clashes on, on a living clone um, if you want to do a different loadout with a different clone. However, um, at least at this state, 
I'm pretty sure if you switch classes, you lose all experience and, and when you come back to it. So you have to be pretty sure that you want to do that. Anyway, that's a long time. There's a lot to explain here. This is a complicated game. Um, I'm being very thorough so that you have all of the information and can make better decisions to survive longer. But there is a lot to say, so I do apologize. Now, we're going to fight this guy right here. So this is a fighter, and if I mouse over him, you see how he turns red? That means it's a hostile target, and my mouse cursor turns into the aiming reticule. Now, currently, I'm going to look in the upper left. I'm in single fire mode. This uses one ammo per shot. I have a 90% accuracy with this. So I always look up here to supersede whatever my basic accuracy is because the fire mode is modifying accuracy as well, I believe. So now I have 90% accuracy here, or I can go to burst fire mode. It's less accurate, and it uses two bullets, but I can hit the person twice if I want. And I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to push F to go to burst fire mode. Notice how if I push F to change fire mode, or I push S, which switches what's in my hand. So I, like... If I go to inventory, you see I have the tactical pistol over here. If I had another weapon, I could push S to switch between it. Right now, it just switches to a bare fist. It does not take action. So I can kind of set myself up before I'm ready to go. Now, if I want to push R to reload, that definitely takes action. And it's going to take uh, two action points with this gun to reload. But I don't need to reload. So I've switched over to burst fire. I'm doing that even though it's slightly less accurate because I want to kill this guy right away. Usually, I like to use um, burst fire unless ammo becomes a concern, because I want to err on the side of killing the enemy as opposed to leaving him alive to shoot me more. So now that I'm on burst fire, I've got my enemy, I'm going to select him and I'm going to right click. This gives you more information, opens up a whole window about this particular enemy. So this is a civil resistance force combat unit. They've boarded our ship, they're invading us. This is the equipment they have. Now, there's a chance that I will be able to get this gear. Um, and you can notice the durability of it. And then um, you can go over to their health screen to see how they're doing. This person has taken no damage. Um, and you get more info about them here. And you can see their resistances. Now, this could become important for different ammo types. If you want to switch to a different bullet type. Um, or different gun uh, that you have loaded up. But right now, we're not too worried about it. We're just, you know, we don't have that many choices. We're going to shoot them. They are shooting us. You can look at their weapon. They have a submachine gun here. It's using the same bullets that we're using, 9mm bullets. And um, maybe we want to get that. A submachine gun sounds pretty good. So I'm going to left click on this guy. I shot them twice. Now remember, this is what would fool me when I, or, and did fool me when I first started playing. I was like, why aren't they shooting back? They're not shooting back because... In normal um, move mode, normal walking mode, I have two action points. And firing, even on burst fire, only takes one action with this weapon. So I could shoot them again. Now we could right click on them and we could look at their health to see what happened. There is no combat log in this game, which is unfortunate for me because I love combat logs. But you can just look at them here to see what's kind of going on. And this person took 13 damage from that shot. Apparently we hit them in the foot. And, you know, it's not great. I'm going to shoot them again. Okay. So they only got one action before it comes back to us. Now, our combat focus made it so that, you know, they couldn't hit us. So we've taken no damage. We're at, you can look at our health. We're at 132 right here. I could push H. All I have is my knee joint um, problem. And I'm going to right click on this fool. And we can go to their health again. 25 health. All right, let's just keep shooting. Okay, now we've hit them so much, I can right-click on them that they are kind of, like, dazed. And uh, is there any information about that right now? No. So usually what this means, uh, and without seeing knee joint, foot... any extra information about this i believe this means uh the stars above their head that they're like stunned so they're gonna miss an action i'm gonna shoot him again they're dead okay so the door has closed it's an auto door which means no one else can see us and i'm just gonna immediately push r to reload i'm down to six bullets okay and now again this is vitally important 
I pushed R to reload. I did it. You heard the sound effect, but we're not done yet. It takes two action points. So look, one turn action has passed. You can see in the upper left, a little hourglass means I'm still reloading. So I'm just going to push spacebar to pass a turn. And now it's reloaded. I'm at back to 14 bullets here. Um, and our fracture is back, unfortunately, and did not get healed by the bandage. So we have a really persistent injury, which is annoying. But what can you do? All right, so I'm going to walk over here. Now, I'm going to left-click to look at this guy. So all of the gear that we saw, we do indeed get. Now, usually you're going to get all the gear. The only thing is, like, sometimes if you shoot it, you can damage it so much that it's gone or not usable, I believe. But for us, we were able to get it all. Now, um, if I am interested in this uh, equipment... I could just pick it up and I can wear it. Now, remember, I mouse over it and it will compare it. Now, the gas mask, I don't have anything on my head. So this is just going to give me two blunt resist, two pierce resist, 12 poison resist, which is awesome, two cut resist. So it's really good armor for our head because we have nothing. However, it will add 0.8 kilograms of weight. So let me um, right click on, well, I think, can I, yeah, you could control left click it to uh, equip it right from their body or you could drag it over or you could just take it and then put it on now my weight you could see that it has reduced my dodge by an extra percent by equipping that but it's more than worth it to have this gas mask on now this armored jacket the durability is bad that's why the number is in red because my um t-shirt has taken no damage but would you rather, this is just me talking, but would you rather wear a t-shirt or an armored jacket if you were in a gunfight with someone? I'll take the armored jacket. Yes, it's heavy, but it gives me four cold resist, four blunt resist, six resist pierce, four resist cut, and two resist fire. I'm going to um, just go ahead and control left click. Now, if I don't, looks like if I don't have anything in the slot, control left click will put it on but if I do then I have to go over here and then once it's in my inventory I can right click and equip now these pants same deal these pants are messed up they're terrible durability but I still want to wear them because they're better than what I've got so I'm going to control left click right click equip and then these shoes same story now I keep control clicking but I'll also show you, you can just drag and drop them over here and then what happens when you do that is you'll pick up your other item and you put it down here now, this submachine gun, do I want to use a submachine gun? It's got more range than my weapon. Everything else is less about it. The durability is god-awful on this. Um, however, uh, it does hold 30 uh, bullets, and it, it's less accurate, but it can fire a lot of shots per round. So I'm going to actually take this and put it over here. Now, additionally, they had nine... Uh, they had three 9mm bullets, so I'm just going to control left click that, and it goes into the bullets that are on my mag vest. And then they had some blood. Now, you can use blood to help yourself regenerate. So for 10 turns, you get plus 10 regeneration, which is a lot of regeneration. However, um, eating blood does add to your quasi-morphosis. The way I think about quasi-morphosis is basically your sanity. Um, in a way, like, so you can go that way, but things get really, really wild as you increase your quasi-morphosis. I don't want to spoil this, but it's kind of like the supernatural element that runs through the entire game, causing, you know, the dead to rise from another be being among other things. So I keep my quasi-morphosis low generally, but that's just me. Now, um, let's see. Is this door open? No, it's closed. Good. Okay. I'm going to move up here. I'm going to just face this way, and I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go to my inventory. I'm going to show you that this is a huge portion of the game. You can, first of all, um, you can unload ammo by right-clicking on anything. So if I don't want to use this gun, but I want the ammo, and I don't want to pick it up, I can just right-click it to unload the ammo. And you're going to want to do this all the time with weapons that you use because ammo is very scarce. You will run out of ammo, and then you will be screwed. So you need get to keep picking up ammo from everybody that you can. And if you run out of ammo, you need to switch weapons to a weapon that you do have ammo for. So you really want to prioritize carrying ammo 
Um, now, the other thing you can do is, like, these jeans. I don't need them anymore. You can disassemble just about all things. So if I disassemble these jeans, you'll notice I get a rag and I get thread. These are crafting components. However, the rag you can use as a bandage in a pinch. So um, the, I'm going to disassemble my t-shirt. It just adds thread to the stack. I'm going to disassemble my hyper shirt and my pants. So now I've gotten some rubber, I've gotten some thread, and I've gotten a rag. So these are all items that I can use to craft. I can also take apart these shoes. And I got some plastic and another piece of uh, another rag. Now I'm going to go H. And you see that the rag actually shows up in my health screen inventory. I'm going to right click and I can use it on this. And a, it's just like a bandage. It's not as great. It's more a makeshift bandage. It doesn't provide the regeneration, but it does stabilize this and provide a 50% chance of it healing. So I'm going to walk through here. Okay. And we are in the med room, so we can click on the auto dock. So the auto dock is an autonomous healing station for health restoration. It requires charging to use. So I can heal my wound actually right here. And now, even though I used a bandage, the knee joint is gone. And if I look at the auto dock, I used one of the three charges to just get rid of that wound. So if you can find these babies, use them. And if they are out of charge, you can use items that you have to charge them up. So um, for example, I believe that the ammunition from uh, the electrical based weapons like the plasma or laser weapons you can use to recharge this i'm pretty sure what that uh that's what it is so you can recharge these or use these um we can use the auto dock if we want um but we really didn't need to it didn't do much at all for us but anyway you can just i'm just demonstrating that and let's open this up there's a first aid kit and a splint yes please take everything there's a water cooler. Take the water. Uh, water stacks up to five. So you, I like to have a stack full of five. This is some more. I'm just going to push G of these um, poppy straws. And then these medicine cabinets. There's some nano stims. These are pretty phenomenal. And how powerful they are. Um... This, like, heals burns, radiation wounds, electrical wounds, deep burns, stabilizes the wound automatically. So it's a great item to have. I'll take it. And then you see this is the graphic for an opened medical cabinet. Go over here. Uh, we got a bandage and we got some um, anti-radon. So this will heal ARS. Uh, and let's see. Um, if we have radiation problems. I'm going to go over here. Open this. Okay, I'm going to kind of make sure I'm looking around. And this is the ship that they kind of raided us on. So this is where the bad guys came in on. These are some of these. This is how they boarded us. And this is something interesting about this game, but this is just space. Like, I am just looking out into space. But if I go to my health, my oxygen is fine. Even if you don't have a gas mask on, I'm pretty sure you just walk out here and it's okay so i don't know if there's like a shield or something keeping the oxygen in or i'm not sure exactly um maybe i'm looking at it wrong anyway um i'm gonna push t and you can tell uh jane now tells us the med block is cleared so we need to go to the armory in the engine room and we will All right, so we're going to go to floor three, which is the armory. And here's our arsenal. Ammo and melee weapons have different damage types, and armor has different resistance types. Choose wisely what you, uh, with what and how to attack to win. Okay, so I'm going to look around, just map this out. Okay, so if I switch right now, I'm on my submachine gun. I am going to push R quickly and just reload this thing. And you can see that on burst fire, I have 80% 2. And if I go rapid fire, I'm 75% accurate. Um, and But I fire 3. So I'm going to try to do this to kill things a little bit faster, if possible. I suggest hiding behind cover to make it harder for enemies to hit us. To do this, stand on the highlighted square. 
The cover can stop a bullet if you're not shooting directly from behind. If you're sh uh, not shooting directly from behind it. If your shooting trajectory intersects with cover, it will be highlighted in red. So what she means to say is if I go up here, great, here's some more useful info. If you ever want to shoot somewhere other than the enemy holds shift, and then you can shoot the environment like this barrel, for example. We have a fuel barrel for the flamethrower. You can blow it up with a shot. Just don't catch fire to yourself. Fire is very dangerous and the ship can catch fire. So you kind of want to be careful. But from here, I can fire over the cover. If you're directly behind it, it will not impede your shot to fire from behind cover and you receive the benefit of hiding. But if the, your shot goes through the cover, then it will affect the accuracy of your shot. Now, I don't see anybody right now. Okay, so here comes a guy uh, right here. And I'm going to right-click on this guy. He's got a assault rifle. I'm going to step back, and I'm going to turn. I did take an action to do that, but now we're behind cover. And I'm going to just shift and shoot the barrel. So uh, this guy is dead. We actually hit him accidentally because our spray fire hit him and then this guy if we look at him um he should be on fire maybe he has to take another turn before it goes into effect um i actually can see this guy i believe to hit him uh no i can't well i mean maybe it's okay i tried to hit him it, it should highlight in red the line of fire if you can't hit something, but I think what was going on is the either the fog of war or the fire was making it so I couldn't tell that I couldn't hit that guy. Uh, but either way, here he comes. Okay, and we can just look at him, and he's, you know, in really bad shape here. 18 health. We hit him again. To the right of the active weapon, weapon is the button to select the shooting mode. Hover the cursor over it to see the advantages and disadvantages of each. Yes, Jane, we did that. And they're both dead. You can see that it just says corpse. And if you highlight them, if it's white outline, they're dead. I'm just going to reload, see if there's anybody else around here. Now, there's fire. I could extinguish this. Like, I could go into my inventory and I could, um, you know, use this. I could throw it. Uh, to just try to, like, you know, um, extinguish uh, the area. I, I believe you can do that. Can I? Or do, can I just extinguish myself with it? No. Um, maybe not. Maybe I lied about that. Okay. Either way, um, I'm going to move this way. And... I have 36 bullets left, so my ammo is running thin. So I'm actually going to switch back to my pistol, open the door, and nobody's coming. So let's look in this room. Most of this is empty, but this container has something in it, and it's got a large caliber pistol. So this baby uses um, rifle type ammo because it's large caliber, and I'm going to actually try this out. So, uh... All right, fine. I'm going to uh, unload the ammo from my pistol, and I'm going to disassemble it. And then I'm going to equip this heavy pistol. So we got some weapon parts. Now, these weapon parts, you see how the top on the, the tooltip, it says fixes firearms. I can right-click on this, click repair, and then my submachine gun is damaged. It's 32 per, uh, durability. I could click on that, and it went all the way up to 52. So it healed... 30 durability just by taking apart that weapon you could usually get uh, you can get armor plates too to fix your armor depending on what type it is uh, so that's great and uh, I've got my gun loaded all right I'm gonna go this way I'm just waiting for the fire to extinguish and it looked like it pretty much has let me uh, double check nobody's over there let's open this and here is an assault pistol this thing is using shotgun type ammo um, I'm going to unload the ammo, pick it up here, and then I'm going to disassemble this. And uh, now, when multiple tabs open, this is the storage, tab one, and then tab two is the ground. So these weapon parts went on the ground because my inventory is full. I got nothing left. So what do I want to keep? Well, I'm just going to use this and fix up my submachine gun. 
And then, um, I'm going to put this, I'll take the wire instead of the poppy straw for the moment. A lot of the crafting stuff we're going to drop because we don't need it yet. You have to learn recipes to be able to craft a lot of the different items. Um, we could actually just, uh, we could talk to her. Okay, good. So she's telling us the floor is cleared, which means we don't have to worry about enemies, so we can just explore freely. And nothing left, it looks like. Okay. So we're going to go to the next floor, but let's check these guys. So, first of all, these guys have SIGs. Cigarettes um, will reduce a bunch of quasimorphosis, 100, in fact. Um, but we don't have to worry about quasimorphosis. If we did, it'd be in the bottom right of the screen. But if you're ever in the Mars system, quasimorphosis does not affect you. It's only in systems outside of Mars. So any, as far as I understand it, Mars and any of the moons of Mars are not affected by quasimorphosis. So we don't have to worry about it right now. Um, I want this, these bullets. And I want it more than I want this large caliber pistol. I like assault rifles, so I'm going to take the assault rifle. I'm going to unload the ammo from this. I'm going to then also, uh, I'm going to get rid of, um, ah, this rubber, and then I'm going to put this water over here, and I'm going to take these bullets and put them down here, keep all my bullets on my mag. I'm going to disassemble this, and I'm going to look, everything here, these are actually better durability, so I'm going to replace them with my boots, and then I'm going to take apart all this, all the armor disassemble everything and then I'm going to look at the ground um, now actually in this case there's three tabs there's tabs one and two which is the two bodies that are on the same tile and then there's tab three which is all of this stuff and I'm going to take the bullets uh, like that you could just push G to take all but we don't have the inventory space but because we took apart armor we have armor plate so I'm going to repair uh, these pants Oh, wait, sorry, can't. Um, this fixes medium armor. And th these are tight pants. These are not medium armor. So we can't fix that with that. Um, I'm going to use this, though, to repair uh, my rifle. I do want these armored plates, though, because I want to look for armor. So I'm going to just get rid of what I have very little of is this wire. I'll take these armored plates. I'll take these armored plates like that. Uh, and that's pretty good. I'm happy about that. Okay. Um, oops, I forgot to check body two. Okay, great. So we're going to take these bullets, and then I'm going to unload the ammo. And we picked it up. Now we have 40 right here. I'm going to disassemble this gun, and we're going to disassemble everything. Now, part of the game is just learning what you want to keep. Fixes makeshift armor, I believe. Um, can I repair any of this? Yes, I can repair these items. Um, so I could, like, repair my shoes. For example, crafting component um, fixes firearms. I will fix my submachine gun, or my rifle, rather. And I'll get more bullets for my rifle. Oh, okay, these stack up to, what, 40? Okay. Um, then I want more bullets, always. So we're going to get rid of another item here. Uh, thread, you can put that over there. That's fine. I prioritize early in the game... Healing items, ammunition, and then anything that I have space for after that. <laughs> like, so I want all these medical items mostly. Um, I don't necessarily need these blood bags. I could probably get rid of them. But I want things to restore my armor, ammunition, and things that will keep me alive, like water bottle, medical kits. And then anything else is fine, but I'm not worried about it. So we're leaving a lot of stuff behind. I do not need the cigarettes right now because quasimorphosis is not an issue because we're in, we're on Phobos or we're around that area. Now you see right there, it just says bodybuilding increased to level two. That's because I'm walking around carrying heavy stuff. So if I go to class and I go to bodybuilding, this just gives you extra health. Every 10 units of weight gives one experience when moving. So just the heavier you are as a scout, you're getting experience on that. Now I am getting heavier. So you see my um, dodge chance is going down significantly, but that's okay. We're going to go to the engine room now.
someone threw grenades into the machine room again. I'll deal with them later. Grenades are used from the um, utility belt slots. Activate grenades usage with the corresponding hotkey pressing or pressing left mouse button. Once you're done, head to the cube-centric engine to the left. Okay, so that verifies what I tried to do before. I was trying to throw the water bottle like a grenade to extinguish the fire. That was not happening. Um, so, fair enough. Now, this thing right here, this is a frag grenade. Do I want frag grenades? Sure, yeah. So what we're going to do is take that instead of this plastic, and then I'm going to uh, put this rifle ammo here and put the frag grenade on my belt so I can use it um, in combat without digging through my bag. All right, and then we'll go over here. And this is a stationary turret. You could play engineering classes uh, that, like, deploy turrets, and turrets are awesome, but they're big. So I'm not going to take that. Uh, I am going to reload my rifle. It takes three turns to reload a rifle, by the way. Uh, call nodes have barricaded themselves in the upper compartment. Get ready for a serious battle. Use cover and don't play the hero. We have several stationary turrets and mines. They are used in the same way from the inventory with right mouse button. Open the context menu. You need to select use. Turrets or mines in this case will be installed in the cell next to you in the direction you are facing. Prepare for defense. We have little time. Just in case, the key for skipping a turn is space. It might be useful if you need to wait a few turns. So if I want, I don't have any mines, but what I could do is I could take this, just put it on the ground, take this blood, put it on the ground, and then I can walk over here and just pick this up, move over here, okay, and then um, I can kind of stand here and then face and then go into my inventory and then just use this. And you see it's put a turret this way. Now, it's facing not the ideal direction. It's facing me. I thought it would face a, the direction I was facing, but it's... Um, I did not do a great job, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Are they coming? They should just come automatically. I think they put some stuff over here for us. Yeah, they gave us some mines over here. So we're going to uh, push G, take the mine, take the mine. Okay, here they come. Destroy them before they blow up the cube-centric engine. Use everything I've already told you. The goal is to protect the Magnum. So I'm going to walk over here. It did turn around. Okay, good. So when I deployed it, it was just, you know, not facing the right direction. But now it is. There we go. So here's a bad guy up here. I'm just getting myself behind cover. There's more. Amp there's 9mm bullets and there's 7.97 uh, bullets, which is for my rifle. If I need to reload, I've got this. Uh, I'm just going to shoot this guy. I'm going to go over to burst fire mode. I got him. Now, they're shooting my turret. That guy's been hurt. Shoot him. Or gal's been hurt. Uh, so, there's a corpse there. There's a guy coming in. So, I'm going to just push two. I'm going to try to throw the grenade um, up there. Now, grenades do not detonate immediately. So, you have to kind of just, you know, push space. And then I'm going to just shoot this guy. And shoot this guy again. Okay, we got hit. Alright, there's three of them. I'm going to throw another grenade. Okay, and then I'm going to fire. Now, I think my grenade... Either it's going to explode, or it went out into space off the screen. I'm not sure. So let's see what happens with my grenade. But for the time being, I'm just going to shoot this guy. Now, luckily for us, there there it goes. There goes the first grenade. This grenade still needs to some time before it explodes. I shoot right here. Training increased to level 2, which is a skill that we are leveling by shooting. Hit that guy. This grenade should blow up any time now. Blind Fury went off, um, which when we took damage, and we just do 25% more damage, which is sweet. Oops. Oh my god, I hit my own turret. I am sorry. Okay. There we go. So the second grenade went off. The turret's down. These two guys are here. Um, let me see, which one is the most hurt? 21 health. Five health. Okay, I gotta hit this guy. Right, that guy's dead. 
I'm hurt. I'll push H to show you, but not much. Like, this is a minor wound. It's self-healing. I think there's a bug right now where it's actually not self-healing, but it's supposed to be. And what this means is, like, this is not even serious. It's not even debuffing me um, at all. And so I don't have to worry uh, about this. But this is because of our armor pretty much protected this. It was like a glancing blow. So you, there's a little bit of red in our health meter, but we've only lost one hit point. So I'm just going to keep shooting. Well done, Frank. All invaders eliminated, and Magnum is no longer under threat. See you at the bridge over and out. Sweet. It's over. The Magnum has sustained minor damage. Basically, it won't affect the functionality of the equipment and crew, so we can go where we want to do and do what we want. The system is open to us. Fantastic. So, at this point, this is all of our cargo um, that's on the ship. These are just backup weapons, backup supplies that we get. And if you want, you can just push unload all, and then anything in your inventory will go over here, and then we'll we'll gear up for the next mission. And then you just click finish mission, and this is us, or our clone, I guess, the, that we were controlling. Um, so we're the kind of the boss, and the people will talk to us. We're in the orbit of Phobos. We can certainly do as Jane said. Contracts are waiting, but as the saying goes, honor is lost. Everything is lost. Honor is preserved. Everything is preserved. We were able to track down the exact location of the su shuttle launches its rogue city. Most likely, Civil Resistance has set up a training center and a transshipment point there. Before we start chasing money, I suggest to stick a red-hot poker in the Red's ass. He wants revenge. He's upset. Which I'm fine with. So, now we've completed the tutorial, and we are in the open portion of the game where we can choose where we want to go and select what missions we want to do, outfit ourselves, craft things on the ship, and we're going to get in that, into all of that in the next episode. This is a good place to end the first episode, just completing the combat, the basic controls, and this is going to be a beginning guide series because there's a lot to unpack in this game, and I hope you have found this to be useful and fun so far. If there's any points, uh, if you are a Quasimorph expert that you'd like to correct or clarify, that would be awesome. I appreciate that so much. Just please make sure that it's done in a way that's friendly for beginners, people with no experience in the game and doesn't spoil anything. That would be uh, very much appreciated. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'll check you in the next one. Take care.